Hey there guys, I wanted to do a really quick video to show you guys how to make a really easy, transparent sort of glass texture. I saw a couple people asking for this, so I'm just going to go through the method that I learned how to do. Um, what you're going to need is some sort of mesh. This is just a quick cylinder. It's not the best. It doesn't really have the best um, points for reflection and whatnot. But you're also going to want to have a bunch of lights in your scene, and this is what the current material looks like. This is um, in Blender. This is with a glossy texture and I also have a glass texture that you can change the effect of to get what you want. Yeah, so you can use either or. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. Um, sometimes I'll use multiple different effects like this. Depending on your program, you'll have different settings. This is an older version of Blender, so if you have 2.9, your stuff's going to look a little bit different, and the material editor is a bit different as well. But the point is, you have some sort of shiny glass sort of texture material. You want to make sure that whatever your environmental scene is, which I don't know, yeah, mine is just this generic background here, which I'm pretty sure, yeah, I have a bunch of different ones that we can use. You want to have one that has a lot of uh, detail going on in order to get the best sort of effect. So if I click on one of these, you're going to get that kind of look. Um, so if we put the glossy, we'll see a lot more. Um, the other thing is you want to make sure that you have the majority of your actual material or texture black or on a black background or some sort. So this isn't really going to work for what we want because we want to create sort of a transparent glass, like a glass of water or something like that. So we're actually going to go back to one of the neutral backgrounds. Actually, let's see this one. Yeah, this one has a little bit too much color that color right there. Um, and if you want to know what these are, these are, uh, I think they're called HDR, yeah, HDRI images. And you can use this in your scenes to get really cool effects and bakes. I'm going to go back to the one that I had originally, which I believe is this one. Yeah. So you want to have something that has a lot of uh, different variations. And you also want to make sure you have lots of points of light. Now, the reason that we want it completely black is so that when we go into our editing software, we have the ability to make this texture actually transparent and have some translucency to it and whatnot. So that's why you want that, because we'll be using a masking effect. Um, so yeah, whatever kind of texture that you end up wanting to use, you're going to just figure out your scene. Um, I highly recommend if you're using lights or some sort of like a plane or something to make sure that you have emissions on this is going to help it glow especially if it's a plane and that'll actually create different shapes um, that can get baked into the texture so you're going to bake out your texture um, which is pretty simple always remember if you're using an older model a version of blender to make sure you have your image actually put into your node you are going to need Blender Cycles, so Cycle Renderer, and the ability to use nodes in order to do this in um, this version of Blender, but you can make materials in all different types of programs and bake out your textures in different programs. It doesn't really matter. The point is we want to get a black sort of texture like this. So we moved over to Photoshop. You can use GIMP. You can use any type of program that allows you to put masking onto a layer. That's the most important and really only thing that you need to know. Now, I have a couple different textures that I've already done, but we're going to use this one because you can see uh, all the detail pretty clearly. It's very simple. You want to make sure that you actually have a layer that you can edit. So we're just going to duplicate that real quick. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to control A if you're in Photoshop to select all, or you can go up here and say select all and copy. You can also inverse the image from here too, but oh, that, that's the selection, excuse me. Um, so what we're going to do then is go down here where it says masking and we're going to add a mask layer. Now, in order to actually edit the mask layer, well, how we need to, you're going to have to hold down Alt and click on the mask layer. So now we have a blank image here. That's because we're actually directly into the image that's on the mask. So if you click Control V, you're going to end up pasting that image that you just copied of the bake directly into the mask. 
Now if you click off, you're going to see it become suddenly very transparent. And this is what we want. All this little detail here that you see is what is going to be left over once you have created this mask. So all these dark parts are going to be quote unquote the dark parts of the bake or the reflection and then all the white parts that you can't see right now but if I do this all these white parts are going to be the reflective parts. Now this is up to personal preference but what I tend to like to do is put some sort of uh, layer under or above it and lower the opacity. This is going to make it so that um, everywhere where the black was isn't completely transparent. Um, at this point, you can go in with brushes and all sorts of things. I'm actually going to make a full black layer so I can see what I'm doing. Actually, we'll make it a gray layer. So I can just barely see the details. There you go. So I might come in here with something like an overlay brush and grab a white brush and maybe add just a little bit more emphasis on certain areas. This is not the best UV, this is actually, that part's actually not even going to be seen, it's on the bottom. Um, you can always go in with a new layer and do random streaks. I'm not sure how effective this will be. This is just really, really quick sort of thing. Okay, I kind of like how that's going there, but this right here is a little too serious. So again, I just did a very quick UV, default UV, so I don't know how it's going to look. And so then you're going to want to make sure that you don't have, um, unless you have like this white layer that I said before, uh, I think 10% will be fine. Um, so we're going to save this as I have a couple different variations of textures already baked out. So, And now we're going to go into Second Life and I'm going to show you guys the end result. Okay, so we are now in Second Life and these are a couple examples that I've already made. So this is what it looks like when you bake on a full black texture. There's no bottom here, ignore that. Um, as you can see, there's all the black parts and then the white parts are supposed to be our transparent parts. I have this one as well. Again, these were really quickly made. I didn't really set up my scene properly for baking glass and the geometry of this cup didn't really have a lot of uh, good parts to make a really good looking mesh with highlights and whatnot. But as you can see, that environmental texture created a very interesting pattern and effect all over this cup. And then when it's actually transparent, as you can see, it has a little bit more depth. Now, you're definitely going to want to play around and finesse your textures, erase parts, recolor parts, um, edit things. But as you can see, it looks pretty cool. And as you can see from this example, the darker the uh, actual black parts or dark parts of your bake when they are inverted or the quote unquote mesh, not the mesh, excuse me, the mask cuts away, you're going to have a lot more transparency than here on the outside, which had a grayer tint. Um, a, a, it's a lot lighter here, so there's a lot less that it can cut away. But as you can see, you can still see all of this. Um, so what I want to do is actually show you guys the texture that we made, which is this one. So it might not look as good as the other ones, but as you can see, we have some of the um, highlights here. What ended up happening that caused kind of the problem was that there was too much of the black transparent in the middle here, and on the outside was a lighter sort of color. But it does look like a transparent sort of cup, which is what we're going for. And if you tint this, especially in Photoshop, if you give it a small tint or gradient, or you go in and hand paint over all the highlights, it definitely could look like a cup. And you could put ice cubes in there, so on and so forth. 
So, I hope that helps you guys, and you learned how to make textures that are kind of transparent. Again, these are not the best, but yeah. Okay, bye guys!